10 Lesser Known American Mysteries Number 1, Henry Starr and the Stevens County Treasure Of the many famous outlaws who roamed and terrorized the Wild West, Henry Starr stands out as one of the most interesting, yet few people today remember him. From a young age, Henry was exposed to a life of crime in his native Oklahoma. The so-called Cherokee bad boy was the last in a long line of thieves and criminals, which also included the famed Bell Star, one of his close relatives. He began his career as a small-time bandit by stealing and taking horses, eventually escalating to murder when he gunned down a deputy U.S. Marshal in 1892. He was imprisoned for these crimes but later released on a technicality. Star returned to his criminal ways after his release, eventually deciding to take up the highly profitable pursuit of bank robbing. He wound up in jail a few times, but he went on to hold up around 20 banks in the early 1900s, expanding his criminal ventures into Kansas and Arkansas. This would end badly for Star. He was blasted through the chest with a shotgun during one bank heist in Harrison, Arkansas. During his long run as a criminal, he claimed to have stolen over $60,000 by the time of his death in 1921. None of this is a mystery, though, the real mystery pertains to the large stash of loot he supposedly buried somewhere near the Cimarron River in Stevens County, Kansas. Starr reportedly told others that he hid his secret cash in a spot where nobody would find it in a million years. So far, no one has come forward with a loot in the 95 years since the outlaw's death, so maybe his prediction will stay true. Number 2, Leveland UFO Sighting One of the most incredible UFO sightings in ufology occurred on November 2, 1957, when dozens reported strange things in the skies over Leveland, Texas. The sheriff's office and on-duty patrolman A.J. Fowler were flooded with calls from scared citizens reporting bright lights in the sky. Shortly after 11 p.m., Pedro Salcedo and Joe Salas called in when their pickup truck suddenly rolled to a stop as they watched a 61-meter, 200-feet, cigar-shaped object fly overhead. Moments later, their truck started back up again, as if nothing happened. For the time being, Fowler shrugged off the report. Later, however, more reports came in from others claiming that their vehicles had stalled while either watching a UFO in the sky above or encountering bright objects just sitting in the road. Fowler wrote down that the sheriff's office took over 15 calls on these strange lights. At 1.30 a.m., Sheriff Clem and Deputy McCulloch left the station to track down the lights in the sky. Just outside of Leveland, they witnessed a large, glowing object fly over the highway ahead of them. Number 3, Meriwether Lewis's Death Meriwether Lewis, who led the famed Lewis and Clark expedition alongside William Clark, returned to St. Louis, Missouri in 1807, after his long trek through the vast Pacific Northwest. For a year or so, he dabbled in politics and was appointed governor of the Upper Louisiana Territory by his friend, President Thomas Jefferson. On September 3, 1809, he set out for Washington, D.C., to settle some business matters. However, he never made it there alive. Lewis decided to take the Nashus Race route, a rugged trail going east to Washington, D.C. He stopped at Grinder's Stand, a small inn on the trail, to rest for the night of October 10. That evening, the innkeeper's wife, Priscilla Grinder, reported that Lewis was behaving erratically and kept pacing around the inn's dining area. Shortly after dinner, he retired to his bedroom. In the early morning hours of October 11, Priscilla said she heard a couple of gunshots and watched Lewis drag himself out of his room, crying out for help. It is unclear why she didn't aid him, which also casts doubt on her story. Servants in the inn found Lewis on the floor, suffering from a gunshot to the abdomen and another to the head. He died shortly after sunrise that morning, at the age of 35. Number 4 St. James Hotel of New Mexico 
Unreal Lambert was the White House chef for President Lincoln right up until Lincoln's assassination on April 15, 1865. The tragic event caused Henri to leave Washington and head west, like many men and women did back then. Eventually, he wound up in Cimarron, New Mexico, where he built the St. James Hotel, a very nice inn and saloon by the standards of the day, in 1872. Over the years, the list of occupants and visitors grew to include some pretty famous names. On the way to Tombstone, Arizona, the Earp brothers stopped at the inn and stayed for a few days. Western showman Buffalo Bill Cody enjoyed his stay at the hotel, and even outlaw Jesse James was a guest in room 14 at one point. Over time, the hotel was also the site of multiple murders and killings. In 1901, Henri's sons replaced the roof of St. James and found some 20 bullet holes in the ceiling. This is why the hotel is now called one of the most haunted inns in America. Many have reported odd things happening or seeing ghosts and spirits. If you smell roses at any point in your stay, it may be Mary Lambert, Henri's wife. Two young girls along with Henri's son Johnny, have been spotted playing in the halls. A spirit known as TJ is supposedly still in room 18, having died there after being shot in a high-stakes poker game. If you're brave enough, you can book a room at St. James. Just know that while all of their guests check out, not all of the guests may leave. Number 5, Knights of the Golden Circle The Knights of the Golden Circle or KGC for short, was a clandestine group of Southern sympathizers that formed before the Civil War. When fighting between the states broke out in 1861, their power and numbers only grew. They sought to conquer a circle of areas in Mexico, Central America, Northern South America, Cuba, and the West Indies to form a Confederate empire of slave states, hence the name Golden Circle. As the Civil War raged on, the KGC decided to postpone their plans for South American domination and instead began to focus on supporting the struggling Confederate government. The KGC and many of their alleged higher ups in the Confederate government, such as Jefferson Davis, J. E. B. Stewart, and Nathan Bedford Forrest, tried to aid the Confederacy by capturing guns, supplies, munitions, and, according to some, gold. Lots and lots of gold. When the Confederacy fell in 1865, the KGC allegedly went underground to hide all of their gold, along with some of the recovered Confederate treasury. They used coats, treasure maps, and guards called sentinels to hide and protect their vast caches of treasure. Number 6, The Gypsy Hill Killings a string of gruesome murders shook the California Bay Area back in early 1976, when five women were found stabbed in the woods of San Mateo County. The killings sparked massive investigations and continue to hold public interest all these years later. The first victim, Veronica Cassio, was discovered in a creek in January 1976. The 18-year-old girl had been stabbed over 30 times. Tatiana Blackwell, age 14, was reported missing only weeks later but was eventually found in June. She, too, sustained multiple stab wounds. In February, 17-year-old Paula Baxter was found behind a church, stabbed and sexually assaulted. In April, police uncovered the body of Denise Lamp, a 19-year-old who also had been stabbed over 20 times. The San Mateo slasher struck one more time and killed Carol Booth, who was found on May 6, after she had been missing for about two months. Number 7, The Killing Fields of Texas Imagine a place, so rugged and desolate, so empty and uninhabited, that it would be the perfect dumping ground for a serial killer. Imagine a hot, humid area, where the animals, the insects, and the weather can destroy any evidence in a matter of a few days. This place is the Texas Killing Fields, located just off Interstate 45 between Galveston and Houston. This entire swath of land consists of thick marshes, overgrown patches, and abandoned oil fields. The 40-kilometer, 
25 miles, area of the fields borders League City and the nearby Calder Royal Field and is the site of some of the most puzzling murders in the United States. Since the early 1970s, over 30 young women have been found dead in the fields. Investigators believe that a portion of the deaths are the work of a single serial killer, considering the similarities between many of the girls. Others attribute the killings to migrant workers from the local oil rigs, or truck drivers, who only pass through for limited periods of time. Today, there's only one conviction tied to the fields, resulting from the case of Crystal Jean Baker. Number 8, Dighton Rock The Dighton Rock, known for its puzzling petroglyphs, stands as one of the greatest mysteries in Massachusetts. The 40-ton boulder that once jutted out of the Taunton River, close to Dighton, Massachusetts, has stirred up all sorts of speculation over its inscriptions for close to 300 years. Investigators have attempted to decode the odd glyphs since an English colonist first described the boulder in 1680, but they have had little success. In 1963, state officials removed the boulder and kept it for preservation. The Dighton Rock State Park was established in 1980 by the state of Massachusetts. Now, the rock remains in the museum there, just as mysterious as it was centuries ago. Number 9, Bragg Road, aka Ghost Road, in Saratoga, Texas. Ghost lights have dotted the American South for many years now. Many of these lights have made small communities like Gurdon, Arkansas quite famous. One lesser-known light appears on Bragg Road, which is deep in the heart of southeast Texas, near Saratoga and Counts. This odd orb was first reported back in the 1920s and 1930s. Its fame increased during the 1960s, when a local newspaper editor published multiple stories on the light. Since then, hundreds have flocked to the small, sandy road to get a glimpse of this weird phenomenon. Countless stories attempt to explain the ghost light, and many local legends have spawned to detail its spooky origins. One legend says it's a deceased Spanish conquistador, looking for the treasure he never recovered. One popular, enduring myth is that it's a decapitated railroad worker, who's still searching for his lost head. Number 10, The Black Dahlia In January 1947, Elizabeth Short was gruesomely murdered. Her body was found mutilated, sliced in half at the waist, in Lemert Park in Los Angeles. The media quickly publicized the story, giving her the nickname The Black Dahlia. Short's murder remains unsolved to this day, and is still the source of widespread speculation. Movies have been made and James Ellroy wrote a bestseller about it. But despite all the attention paid to this case, it was never solved. It's quite possible the murderer was a man connected to other killings who served life in prison. Or the man could still be walking the streets today. Nobody knows. Walking